Now, uh, following up the last uh, presentation of uh, the Flight Cryptography session, um, Eugene Frimpong and uh, the paper Arrows in a Quiver, a secure certificate-less group key distribution protocol for drones. All right, so thank you very much. Um, so the outline is quite simple. I'll discuss the overview, discuss the system model, proposed scheme, security analysis, proposed protocol, experimental results, and then wait for some questions from you guys. Um, so the arrows in the quiver, which I just shortened it for AINQ, is a certificate-less group key distribution scheme that was purposely designed for the drone ecosystem. We designed it such that it's easily extend, extendable to resource-constrained devices. It supports drone mobility, which is drones are able to leave and then join a group. So points to consider, we consider both a centralized and a di distributed key agreement or key distribution protocol. A key agreement protocol is basically a protocol where multiple devices collaborate to produce a key. And then a key distribution is where one entity generates a key and then distributes it to their members. For this scheme, we consider a key distribution because our, our scheme is a key distribution protocol. So the key distribution model, the reliability protocol override, which is one of the one of the major things we considered, the computation and the message override. This work is sponsored by TII in Abu Dhabi as the Technology Innovation Institute by the project I was met, leaving secure in the edge. Um, the system model is quite simple. We consider a CSP to be an abstract entity which acts as a destination for all collected data. The specifics of the CSP are out of the scope of this work. And then we consider the key generation center as a trusted entity responsible for generating and setting system parameters for the completion of the protocol. Um, the KGC also generates partial and partial private and public keys for each entity during the protocol setup phase. Um, we have a set of drones, which for this instance, we consider resource constrained devices. There's some 11 X Pro and then there's Olesha Remote Rev B boards. And then we have the drone team leader, which is considered to be um, a more resourceful device. For this paper, we consider the up extreme Intel i7 board for our experiments. So the, the both the edge and then the drones, the team leader represent the drones in this scenario. <coughs> um, the scheme is based on a pairing free circular certificate less public key cryptography, and then uses standard ECC primitives. We use this approach to make, it con to make it conducive for the resource constraint device because we realized that pairing-based crypto schemes or pairing-based crypto algorithms are very expensive on resource constraint device. a &Q is a is a tuple of eight algorithms, which is a setup that generates secret key value, generates partial key, full key generation, generate group key, key retriever, and then rekey. I'll just go ahead and then elaborate on all these eight algorithms to give you a clear idea of the, how the protocol works and how it is. So for the setup algorithm or setup function, we have the key generation center, which takes as input a secret parameter and then outputs an MS key, which is the secret key for itself. It's public key and then publishes a set of system parameters, which include the public key, it's public key, and then two hash functions, which are required for all entities to proceed with the scheme. We have the generate secret key value, which is undertaken by each entity in the scheme, be it the edge drone or the team leader. So each entity just generates its own secret, secret key and then its own public key based on the secret key. We consider these two as the partial, as partial secret key and partial public key generated by the entity itself. And then we have the generate partial key algorithm, which is which is the generation of the other part of the partial parameters by the with the aid of the KGC. So basically, each entity, be it edge drone or team leader, sends its identity and the initial partial public key to the KGC. The KGC generates an, the other partial public key and then partial secret key, and then sends these back to the drone. So once the drone receives this, it generates its full public key and its full private key based on the initial partial parameters and then the partial parameters received from the KGC. Using this approach, we ensure that the KGC does not necessarily have to be fully trusted because he does not, he or she, he does not know the complete secret key or the complete public key of each parameter. In this case, should the KGC be compromised, 
he is not able to leak the full private and full public key of each entity in the scheme. Then we have the generate group key, group key function, which is the main contribution of this work. So basically we have a member, we have the, we have the team leader. He takes as input a group list. So this group list contains a list of its group members. It, it contains the identity and their respective public keys. We assume that this list is maintained by the group leader or it can be maintained by a control center, which updates the group list when a member leaves or joins a group. So based on this group list, the team leader generates a key, generates a secret parameter, and then using the secret parameter, it generates an individual ciphertext for each member of its, its group. So basically for each member, there's a different ciphertext. Then the KGC, the team leader publishes the V parameter and then the complete list of ciphertext. So the ciphertext are public. And then the ciphertext are public and then the time taken. Then we have the key retrieval phase, which is where each member drone sees the list of group, the list of ciphertext, and then works on it. So basically, we have here each edge drone. It takes as input the V parameter, the list of ciphertext, and then the time. Then it retrieves the TI based on its full secret key and then the V parameter. And then it's able to retrieve the key based on this. So once the member, once the once the group, the edge drone is a legit member of that group, is able to generate or retrieve the key. So basically the key comes out upon successful run of this algorithm. Then yeah, we have the rekeying. This, this is what we this is what we this is the approach we use to ensure the ensure that the key is dynamic. That is when a member joins a group, a new key is created. And when a member leaves a group, a new a new key is created. So let's say we have an updated group list, which is when a member leaves or joins the group. The group key goes through the goes through some part of the initial process. It generates a new key, but then it maintains the same secret parameters. And then if there's if, for instance, we have a group where a new group, a new member has joined, it generates the new ciphertext for the, um, the new member. But if if it's a if it's a situation where a drone has left the group, it simply goes ahead to generate the new ciphertext based on the existing members of the group. And then it publishes the new ciphertext for each member. Notice that the V is the same, V is maintained. So V does not change. So even here, you do not necessarily have to publish the V, you can just publish the ciphertext. So we actually provide, um, um, a we provide a security analysis of our scheme. We consider two adversaries. We consider an outside adversary, which is a passive eavesdropper or malicious entity who has captured one of the drones. Or we consider an inside adversary, which is a corrupt KGC or a revoked, a revoked user. We formally define the ANQ INDCCA2 game, which has five, um, five oracles, the general security value, the general partial key, generate group key and then key retriever and then a rekey oracles. So the challenge phase is quite simple. The adversary submits two distinct chosen session keys, K0 and K1. The challenger selects a random B and then sends the challenge ciphertext. Finally, after running another query phase, the adversary outputs a guess for the value of B. So our scheme is secure under the DDH assumption in the random oracle if no adversary has a non-negligible advantage in winning this game. So this is what we use to prove the security of our scheme. Additionally, we also have the following security requirements of our scheme, basically key freshness, which is such that when for every, for every session, there's a new key. And then whenever a member joins or leaves the group, there's also a new key. Group key secrecy is a trivial inference of the, the game I just described previously. And then forward or back, backward secrecy. Whenever a new revocation or enrollment happens, the session key is refreshed by executing a rekey algorithm. So basically, whenever a, a, a member leaves their group, he does not have access to the old to, to the new key. And when a member joins the group, he does not have access to old messages because a new key is generated one, once he joins the group. Um, we use a simple protocol to to show the applicability of our scheme. So for this protocol, we have, an, we have a scenario where we have a team leader who wishes to generate a group key for his group in the presence of a trusted KGC. 
and the group, the list of group members is denoted by G L I D I D one D two and then D H. So our scheme is quite simple. The, uh, Eugene, you're on the five minute mark. Thank you very much. Generates the key and V, computes the ciphertext, computes a message which is basically a random number V ciphertext, and then the public parameters, and then signs signs the random number V and then the key. This is to ensure that no one can just this is to ensure message freshness. So he sends the message to the edge drone, computes TI, compute KG, and then verify M1. If M1, if M1 verifies correctly, the scheme is continued. If not, the scheme is aborted. Um, we did some experimental results to show that our scheme is quite practical and efficient. So we have for the edge, for the edge drones, like I mentioned in the beginning, we consider the SAM 11 X Pro, which is an which is an ARM Cortex M23 board with 16 kilobits RAM, 64 kilobits flash, and then clock speed of 32 megahertz. And then we have the Zolesia remote, which is an ARM Cortex M3, 32 kilobits RAM, 512 kilobits flash, and then 32. So our results, we noticed that it was mostly based on the expense, expense of the EC multiplication. So the generate secret key function has like one, one multiplication and the cost is 5.3 seconds for the SUM11 and then 2.9 for the Zolesha. Key retriever has also one and it's 4.7 for SUM11 and then 2.6 for the Zolesha. And then for the, for the team leader, we use the app extreme Intel i7, 16 gigabytes RAM, which shows how different it is from the edge device itself, 64 gig flash and then the Intel UHD 60. So basically, we did it for a number of drones. So for our high end, we have for 2,000 drones, it takes 700 milliseconds to generate the cipher text for all of them. And then the rekey process takes under 20 milliseconds. And then so that shows how much more scalable our scheme is for um, an environment consistent of, let's say, 2,000 edge drones when you have to compute the, when you have to compute a cipher text for 2,000 edge drones, you can do it in under, under one second using the board we use. So um, this actually goes to show the feasibility or the practicality of our proposed scheme and then the results back out, back out point. So basically that is that. Um, all code is publicly available at the link provided. And I think in the paper also, we state the way the code is available. So if you want, you can have a look at it and then test it for yourself. Um, so yeah, that is that for this paper. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any contributions, you can say it. Thank you very much, Jean. So, um, any questions? Either raise your hand or uh, type in the chat directly. Okay, I can I can ask uh, something first. So, um, well, how uh, how well does uh, Arrows and Equiver scale? You know, compared to regular group key agreement schemes. Um. Okay, um, one, so like I described, the group key agreement schemes, you, have, you need all the members to actually collaborate to generate the key. So first of all, that is one downside in that all the members have to be online to generate the key. Unlike our scheme where you just generate the key and then distribute it. If a member is not online, he can always retrieve the key or request for it. This is something that we, this is something that we are going to consider next, which is called the healing process where we have, we have to consider what happens when a member misses the initial distribution of the ciphertext or the initial publish. Also, like I mentioned in the experiments, um, we, use, we experimented for 2,000 drones and then the results were under, um, under one second. But if we were to compare this with a group key agreement scheme, it would basically mean that I would need 2,000 drones to actually compute one key. This actually shows how unscalable a regular group key agreement scheme is and shows how scalable ours is. But for experiment purposes, we actually went ahead and implemented um, another a certificate group key agreement scheme. But we were able to get results for up to three, up to up to three members collaborating to generate one key. And even then, we compare because it's quite different and comparing them is quite difficult. We compare that to our scheme where we are generating a key for a key for three. We are generating ciphertext for three users. 
and then computed the compare the complete time, the total time, and realized that even for three members, our scheme was still faster than the group key agreement scheme. And obviously, we can't scale the group key agreement scheme to something like 2,000 edge devices to compare. So our scheme is very scalable as compared to regular group key agreement schemes. OK, thank you. So uh, we have um, one more question in the chat from uh, Siddharth Rao. Uh, what do you think are the main limitation of this approach and asking from practical attacks point of view? Well, we we did not consider the availability of the team leader. So should a situation arise where the team leader is taken offline, we would have to have a system in place where you'd have another device that would come in to replace the team leader or another way of setting up a system such that there will be a way to get the key to them. So we, there's actually something we've considered and something we are working towards where we'd have a situation where should one drone or the team leader go offline, we would have a situation where another team leader can come in and easily establish the secure session or the member drone. So that is one limitation of our scheme, obviously. So yeah. And also, like I mentioned, the whole thing about what happens when one edge drone misses the public misses the publishing of the of the group, the ciphertext. How does he get his ciphertext? This we can actually do by actually having the edge device ask another edge device for the list of ciphertext, which can which can pose a security risk because you can just put a malicious edge device in. Or we have a situation where he can direct communicate directly with the team leader to request for a new ciphertext. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Uh, so I don't see any any other questions. So uh, Eugene, thank you very much.